Hey everyone, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and welcome back to my ultimate guide to Logic Pro. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to work with MIDI and software instruments in Logic so that you can compose your own beats, drum patterns, bass lines, chords, etc., with software instruments, or what are sometimes called virtual instruments. But first, there's a little background information that is really important to know about MIDI before we get started. MIDI stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface, and it was originally released to the public in 1983. MIDI is a communications protocol, so it's a digital system of sending and receiving musical instrument messages. In order to send these musical messages to Logic or any DAW, you need a MIDI controller of some kind. These come in a wide array of shapes and forms and price points. MIDI keyboard controllers are the most common. Here I have an Alessis V25, which is a more budget-friendly option with 25 keys. And here I have a Novation Launch Key 61, which is a larger 61 key option. Now, not all of these are keyboard controllers. This is a Novation Launchpad Pro. Basically, what this does is it converts all of the keyboard keys into more drum pad style buttons for finger drumming and things like that. However, these can still be used for playing in melodies, bass lines, and chords. It's just that the format is a bit different. Now, on some MIDI controllers, you'll see that they have knobs and faders and other controls. So there are MIDI controllers out there that are just focused on knobs and faders like this Monogram Creative Console. There is no keyboard here, so there's no note entry with this, but you can control parameters within synthesizers using the knobs and faders. Next, let's talk a bit about MIDI messages. There are many different types of MIDI messages that we'll explore later on in this series, but the main type of MIDI message is called a note on message. So when I play a key or multiple keys on my MIDI controller, this will send a note on message or multiple note on messages to Logic, which includes two different types of information. The pitch information, so this is what pitch I'm playing, what note I'm playing, so I'm playing C, am I playing G, am I playing F sharp? Each pitch on the keyboard from lowest to highest is assigned a note number that is defined by the MIDI protocol. These numbers range from zero to 127, with lower notes being closer to zero and higher notes being closer to 127. If middle C is C4 in traditional music notation, in most DAWs it's C3, Middle C is typically denoted by MIDI note number 60. So if you were to go up from middle C to C sharp, now you've gone up to 61. If you go up to D, now you're on 62 and so forth and so on. So pitch or note numbers are a MIDI value between zero and 127. And this zero to 127 range is a range that you're gonna see a lot in MIDI messages because almost all MIDI messages conform to this zero to 127 structure. Another type of MIDI information that is sent by a note on message is called velocity. So velocity is another value between zero and 127 that has to do with how fast you play the keys on your MIDI controller. And I don't mean how fast are you, are you playing, like 16th notes, eighth notes. It has to do with how fast you press the keys. Do you press them quickly or do you press them more slowly and more gently? So it really doesn't have anything to do with how hard you press the keys. It actually has more to do with how fast you press the keys. Now, velocity will generally control volume or some dynamic of your software instrument, but not always. Sometimes velocity can be paired to other parameters like filter controls or some sort of modulation effect, for example. But in general, velocity is generally paired to volume and controls the dynamic of the instrument. So those are the two types of information that is sent in a note on message, the pitch or note number and velocity. Now there are additional types of MIDI messages. You'll see many MIDI controllers, like I said before, have knobs and faders on them. These are different controls that are typically called continuous controllers or control change messages. There's also pitch bend, which is its own independent MIDI message. We'll come back to these types of MIDI messages later on in the series, but I just want you to be aware there are more types of MIDI messages than just no on messages. Now, most MIDI controllers are universal. You can just plug them in over USB and they will just work with Logic. However, some will require certain drivers to work, so check with your manufacturer for specific details on that. 
Now, if you don't have a MIDI controller, you can actually use your typing keyboard to enter MIDI notes in Logic as well. I'll show you how to do that as well when we jump into Logic in just a bit. But first, I wanna tell you about the sponsor for this video that has helped me make this series possible, Boombox. As a producer and mixing engineer who primarily works remotely from my home studio, I really appreciate Boombox.io for keeping my projects and client feedback organized and all in one place. I can batch upload uncompressed audio files, I can invite collaborators to listen and leave timestamped feedback on my tracks, and create different versions of a project, and ultimately helps me get the annoying parts of my job done quicker so I can spend more time on being creative as a music producer. But don't take my word for it, try it out for yourself. You can sign up today at boombox.io and get 10 gigabytes of free storage. Okay, so I have both my launch pad and my V25 connected over USB. And in order to input notes into Logic, you first need to create a software instrument track. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just going to create a new software instrument track. And before you click create, down here there's a menu that says instrument. You can choose a specific starting instrument here, but by default, if you just use this default patch, Logic will create an electric piano for you. So I'm just gonna go ahead and keep it on that. You can choose to open the library or not open the library, and then I'll just click Create. So you can see here it's created a classic electric piano instrument. And to test this out and just to make sure that I'm getting MIDI input with both of my MIDI controllers, I'm just going to record enable this track and then play a few notes on each of my MIDI controllers. So that one's working. And then uh, my launch pad. So they're both working. And that's what's really cool about MIDI is because it's sort of a generic protocol, you can connect multiple MIDI controllers to the same machine at the same time, and they'll work. You can even play them at the same time. So they'll work together in tandem over USB. Now, before we get into recording anything, we wanna set up Logic for recording to minimize latency. So what I'm gonna do is go up to Logic Pro, Settings, and I'm gonna to go to Audio. And remember, this is Preferences if you're on an older version of Logic. And we're gonna change the buffer size from this higher setting to a much lower setting. Now it's still showing I'm getting a ton of latency here. That's just because I'm running a screen capture software at the same time. Your latency should be much lower than what's showing here. And then just click apply to apply the lower buffer size. Now IO buffer is not quite as important with MIDI recordings as it is with audio recordings, but it does still have an effect on the latency while recording. So I like to keep this around 32 or 64 anytime I'm recording. Okay, so if you open up the library, remember you can open up the library by pressing Y on your keyboard. You can select any software instrument and then you can select a new patch from the left here. So let's say maybe I want something else like some strings, like some synth strings. So I can go to synthesizer, then I'll go to strings and then I'll choose one of these presets and it'll load up a different preset. or I can play it over here. Now, if you wanna create a second software instrument, you can use the shortcut Option Command N to bring up the new tracks dialog and you can just create a new software instrument. But another cool way to do this is if you have a software instrument selected, just double click below that software instrument in the track headers area and it'll automatically create a brand new blank software instrument. So this is what a blank software instrument looks like. If you go over to the channel strip in the inspector and this here says just instrument and there's nothing loaded up there, you're not gonna hear any sound. Like we're still inputting MIDI to this track, but there's no instrument to interpret the MIDI and then convert it to an audio output. So just be aware of that. You have to choose an instrument in order to hear any sound. So what I'm going to do is build a basic four instrument arrangement with drums, bass, chords, and maybe a synthesizer. So what I'm going to do is just select my current software instrument track. 
I'm gonna go over to the library, I'm gonna go to electronic drum kit, and I'm just gonna choose one of these electronic kits. I'll use this one called analog drive, and this will load up that drum kit for me, and then I can either figure out what the notes are here on my keyboard controller, or I can do it from my launch pad. Now, typically with drum kits, your kick drum is gonna be on C1, and then the rest of the kit is gonna go up from there. Okay, so I'm gonna start with that, just kick and snare, and a couple little, I don't know what those are, little side sticks or something. So I'm gonna lower the tempo to, we'll say 108 BPM. I'm also gonna go ahead and save my project, which is always a good idea. And what you wanna do before you start recording is you wanna make sure that your metronome is turned on. Um, you can do that by going up here. You can just click and hold on it and make sure that click while recording is turned on. So what that means is when you press play, you won't get a metronome. But if I press R on my keyboard to record, you'll get a metronome. You can choose to have the count off turned on or turned off. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off. So the recording will start right here at bar one. And I am not a fan of starting my recordings right on bar one. I typically start on bar two. I do this for a reason to make sure that no notes are cut off on that first beat, on that first bar. There is a way to fix that with MIDI. It's called MIDI Chase, but we'll talk about that in a future video. So I'm actually gonna start my recording at bar two. Okay, and then you just press spacebar when you're done. Now, if I double click on this and open it up in the piano roll editor, you will see that some of these notes are a bit off of the grid. And what you can do is you can actually quantize your MIDI notes to correct any timing issues that you might have. Now, we're gonna get into uh, MIDI quantization and editing in the piano roll later pretty soon, but I wanna show you a quick way to quantize that doesn't even require you to go down into the MIDI uh, editor in the piano roll editor. All you do is you select the MIDI region that you just played, and then you open up the region inspector here, and there's an option here that says quantize. And from this menu, you can choose the quantization value. So the quantization value is going to be the fastest or quickest rhythmic value that you played in your musical idea. So for me, that was a 16th note in this specific example. So watch what happens. I'm gonna open this up in piano roll just so you can see how this works. See how none of these are perfectly on the grid? If I select that region and then change the quantization to 16th note, all of those notes snap to the nearest 16th note on the grid. So now when I play this back, I should have just a perfectly in time drum beat. Okay, so now let's say I wanted to layer up some hi-hats on top of this. Something like that, something real simple. I could create another track and put the hi-hats on a separate track if I wanted to, or I could layer up another MIDI recording on top of this existing MIDI region. So the way you set that up is you go under Logic Pro Settings, and then you go to Recording, and then down here where it says Overlapping Track Recordings MIDI, there's Cycle Off, Cycle On, Replace. For cycle off and cycle on, make sure this is set to merge. And what that will do is it'll merge any MIDI recording you make on top of an existing region. It'll merge that MIDI data into the existing region. So let's give that a shot. I'm gonna play this from my keyboard controller this time. Okay, so I can go back into that MIDI region, and once again, we can see my hi-hats are a bit off, so I can just sort of re-quantize that MIDI data, and everything should, let's turn it off, and then go ahead and turn it back on, and there we go. So all the MIDI data is quantized to the nearest 16th note. So now I'm ready to add another instrument. Let's add some chords this time, so I'm gonna go ahead and just double-click 
below this track to create a new blank MIDI instrument. This time I'll go over here and select a synthesizer. Let's go with synth strings. And yeah, I'll use the authentic strings, the same ones I did before. And I'll just play a really simple like A minor chord progression. Now, if you don't have a MIDI controller, one, I recommend you get one at some point in the future. Two, there is a workaround. If you press Command K on your typing keyboard, this will bring up the musical typing keyboard. What this does is it converts your home row keys and some of the keys above the home row keys into a musical typing keyboard. So what you can do is you can play those corresponding notes on your typing keyboard. And you can play notes in with your typing keyboard. You can control the octave here. So if I want to go up or down an octave, I can do that. And there are several other controls in here as well. Just be aware that your typing keyboard cannot sense velocity. So if you want to change the velocity, you'll have to do that here by clicking the plus button or clicking the minus button to increase or decrease the input velocity. So those notes were much longer. Those were like more like whole notes. So what I'm going to do is quantize that MIDI region to a 1-1 one, one note, which is a whole note. We'll come back to all of these quantization values in more detail in a future video. And you'll see that they all lock into the nearest whole note. And now I'm going to create a bass. So I'm just going to double click and create a new software instrument track. Let's go to synthesizer. We'll go to bass. I'll try out this Agile synth bass. Okay, so once again, I can go ahead and quantize this MIDI data. I'm going to use a 16th note again. There we go. And then we are clipping, so let's go ahead and just pull down the level on all these tracks. Let's repeat this once. Remember, you can just drag over regions, hit Command-R to repeat, and remember to set your cycle range around the selected regions. You can just drag over the regions and hit Command-U. So now I can just loop these uh, 16 bars over and over if I like. But let's add one more instrument to this. I'm gonna go into Synthesizer, and I'll go to Lead. And yeah, let's use the 70s analog lead. Yeah, so it's not a masterpiece or anything, but it works. So if you're new to working with MIDI, take some time, experiment with software instruments, experiment with making MIDI recordings, get used to the process of making MIDI recordings and quantizing MIDI recordings, because we're gonna be doing a lot of work with MIDI in future videos. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.